Okay, we don't have the Olympics this year in 2020. We have to wait till next year. But I need that feel of competition. So I thought to myself, I want to invite one of our best athletes in the Millington Star Coverage area out. Incoming junior, Makaya Holliburg, took my challenge and she's here today. We're going to do what the heptathlon, the cathlon, we're going to test our strength and speed and everything. So you ready for the challenge, young lady? Yes, sir. Okay. So we're going to run around this whole track at Acock Park. You ready? On your mark. Get set. Go. Wow. Oh, ooh, okay. Maybe I can catch up with her. Oh, don't miss the sellers. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay, nobody came here today thinking I might beat you in the speed of it. I'll beat you in the power of it. Let's go to the shop. Please. Okay, little lady. You beat me in the speed of this, but I got 20 plus years on you and old man strength. I'm gonna beat you in the shop. Please. So just stand back and watch a pro. Five feet, beat that. No, no, forget, forget yes. this Olympic stuff. We're gonna go old school arm wrestling. Okay, come on. Let's throw all those Olympic rules out of the book. Okay, three, two, one, go. Yes, I can't believe oh. I just beat him. Oh my goodness, okay. I'm having a bad day. I can admit defeat. You, you're gonna be like the next great Olympian. You're gonna be like Misty Franklin, Gwen, Gwen Torrance, Nick McCray, Gail Devers. Oh, who are they? You don't know who those ladies are? <laughs> oh, okay. Of course. Okay, well, I guess you are young, so it sounds like I need to give a little history lesson. Ooh, Jay. Jay. Welcome back to this week's Best Sellers List. My name is Makaya Halliburton, and I'm a rising junior at Millington Central High School, and I'm a three-sport athlete. So this week, I'm here to entertain Mr. Sellers List. Hey, uh, Makaya, are you talking to somebody? Mm -hmm. um, okay, just making sure. I thought I heard your voice. So now you're ready to listen to my top 10 U.S. female summer Olympians of all time. I guess. Okay, come on. Have a walk with me. So, young lady. My number 10. We're going to start with my number 10. You might have heard her name before, Venus Williams. She spent a little time in Olympics with her sister Serena in doubles, and she won a few medals. And um, big, she had a big tournament out in, in Sydney in 2000. Mm -hmm. Did an outstanding job. She even won a gold medal with the Knicks doubles. Really? Yeah, she played with a guy and won. So, that's how good Venus is. Cool. Yeah, a lot of people just think of Serena and how great she is, but Venus held her own. So that's why she made my list at number 10. That's she's a good. she's a great Olympian. Giselle. And number nine, I bet your mom heard of this young lady before, Mary Lou Redden, 1984 Olympian. She became America's sweetheart through gymnastics. She had the big energy smile, kind of like you were celebrating when you beat me in arm wrestling and all over there. She, she got on the weeds box and everything, but she was the first U.S. woman to win the overall gold medal for gymnastics, wow. beating those girls in China, Russia, and all of them. The first American one did in 1984. And a few have gone on to, to repeat that feat from the U.S., but Mary Lou Redding was the first one. That's why she made my list at number nine. Giselle. Okay, so number eight, we're still gonna do gymnastics. And uh, Shannon Miller, Shannon Miller is the most decorated U.S. Women's Olympian ever. She's part of the uh, Magnificent Seven in 1996 down in Atlanta. She has like the most medals outside of the current group of women, so she kind of helped push it with Dominique Dawes and all those young girls in the 90s. But she was like the grandmother. She kept, she didn't think she participated in like three Olympics, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, Shannon Miller, she's a legend in gymnastics. And that's why she made my top 10. Yeah, I know you're tired of gymnastics and hearing about them. So number seven, mm -hmm. a sport you know a little bit about basketball. Yeah. You ever heard of Teresa Edwards? Mm -hmm. Oh, legend. She played in the, in the Olympics, won the most gold medals of any U.S. women basketball player ever. She mm -hmm. started back in the early 80s, and she ended up playing in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So that's how far her career has gone. She is a legend. 
So let's, let's go down a little bit about Teresa Edwards. She represents the sports basketball. She was one of the top 20th century athletes by Sports Illustrated. Top 20? Yep, and won her first gold medal in 1984, won her last one in the year 2000 at the age of 36. So you like a little basketball, don't you? Yes. You're a point guard, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what she did. So what do you like about basketball? It's enjoyable. It's kind of like an outlet, and it's been my love since seventh grade. And since I started, it's just been kind of there. You know, I've just been playing ever since. Right, but we, now you play soccer as well. Mm -hmm. Could we see an Olympics in soccer? Yes. Okay. And, and, and you track. You know? Yes, I just be for every sport. Okay, but, but, but basketball is where your heart is. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess as we walk a little bit further and we get to my number six, we'll talk track. <laughs> Just sail. Okay, so we're at number six this week. Have a seat, young lady. Okay, number six is a name that's very important in the state of Tennessee, Wilma Rudolph. She went to Tennessee State up in Nashville and was part of the Tiger Bells. Her and her group of, of uh, teammates were four black women that put track and field and black women, very important, on the map in the early 1960s. Really? Yeah, she went down to, well, not down, she went over to Rome, Italy, mm -hmm. and was the star of the Olympics. Her, they call her the gazelle because of her long legs and her running skill. She was just outstanding. That's cool. So, Women Rudolph definitely deserves respect. 100 meter runner, 200 meter, and she's part of that four by 100 meter relay team. Something you know a little bit something about. So, but as you sit here, I'm letting you sit here so you can take a little break. Why are we sitting down? So you can take a break <laughs> at the midway point and uh, give me an opportunity to go talk to your mom a little bit about you, women in sports, and why it's so important to a child's education. Mm -hmm. So stay right here. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, we're at the midway point of the best sellers list. I'm here with Miss Barbara, the mother of that talented young lady that I'm schooling right now. <laughs> um, as a, a parent and a person involved in education, why is it important the, the athletic aspect to a child's education? It's extremely important because it helps them to really be well-rounded. Um, I believe that it gives them skills that they may not otherwise have. Extracurricular activities do that anyway, but sports in particular, because it helps them with time management, it helps them with team dynamics, being part of a team, and also uh, recognizing uh, their their inner abilities and their inner talents. It gives them a self-confidence that they might not otherwise have, um, and it gives them an incentive to do well on their academics because they know if they don't have their academics straight, then it'll prevent them from doing the things that they love. So it definitely helped her a lot when she first started sports in uh, seventh grade. It made an entire world of difference in how she focused in on her schoolwork. Yes, ma'am, and a uh, young lady with talent like that, She's sharing it with three sports mm -hmm. when she could just concentrate on one. Right. And you see her from fall to winter to right. summertime. How is it helping her grow and mature? Um, you know, it has really helped her um, ground herself in setting goals and reaching them, striving for things, and even learning how to deal with struggles and sometimes, you know, with disappointments and defeat. Um, so it's really helped her mature in um, figuring out the things that are important, prioritizing. Um, and, and recognizing the value of hard work because what it takes to be a three sport athlete um, is year round. And in addition you know, to what she does for the school, she also plays AAU basketball in the summer as well. So she really doesn't have a break, yeah. um, but that's her choice because we allow her to make those decisions for herself. We don't push her. Um, she sets her goals and we let her know we'll support her in whatever it is she wants to do, but we don't try to force her to do anything. That's right. So that's all her. Well, my last question for you. We talking about the Summer Olympians, females who her predecessors, the one who paved the road for her, like those women Rudolphs and right. Janet Evans and all these women. What do you hope she learns from that, and what do you think the future holds for? Her? I think um, for her, as far as her learning, I really want her to learn perseverance, um, endurance, and that if she puts her mind to it and her time and her energy, that she can really do anything that she wants to do. Um, that she has that, that natural ability, but also with that, it requires training, it requires dedication, it requires a lot of hard work. And she's shown already that she's willing to do it, um, but I hope that she learns from the, just watching the people who have gone before her that the more she does it, uh, the ability really that she puts into to play on the field or on the court, the sky is really the limit, and she can go where she wants to go, she can do what she wants to do, and it can you know give her uh, whatever it is that she's looking for uh, out of life. Yes, ma'am. Well, the next place I need her to go to is 
your bank account so y'all can help pay for my sore arm <laughs> for beating me on wrestling. But besides that, yeah, she did a little bruising on you. Yeah, huh? but besides that, I'm <laughs> glad to have you and her here today, and thank you for participating in the Midway Point. Okay, young lady, we're back with our countdown. Get on up. We gotta talk about Flojo. We're talking about speed here. Now, you heard of Flojo, right? Mm -hmm. Florence Griffin Jordan, mm -hmm. the fastest woman in the world. Her 100 meter time is still the best ever. That's why she's number five on my list. And she had fashion, nails, style, charisma, and everything. Kind of yes, like you. Long nails. Yes, and the hair and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, she made the track look good too. So Florence Griffin Jordan is a well-deserved number five on my list. Giselle. Okay, so number four, we're in my Mount Rushmore ladies. Janet Evans, the greatest U.S. women swimmer ever. She was the Flo Joe of the swimming pool in 1988, mm -hmm. set records, and then came back later in 92 in one of those same events. So Janet Evans is, is forgotten because she was so plain and simple. She wasn't as flashy as Flo Joe, mm -hmm. but she held her own in that swimming pool. So make sure you do a little research on Janet Evans at number okay, four. Okay. Okay, so number three. I know you heard about this one. Number three, yeah. three Babe Dietrichson. 1932. Mm -hmm. Almost 100 years ago. That big old Coliseum that they have out there in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. she was the star there. She almost won four gold medals there. They cheated her out of her fourth one. But she pretty much put women athletes on the map that they could play professional. She went on to play professional golf. Mm -hmm. And she competed against men in events. She basically was like a traveling show back in the 1930s and 40s. But Babe Dietrichson is a very important pioneer in women's athletics. That's why she's number three on my list. Giselle. And number two, you heard of this one, woman mm -hmm. before, Simone Biles, the greatest gymnast ever. Her athletic feats, her body, her chemistry out there, and all the events. She won the most gold medals in a single Olympics ever. And she followed in Mary Lou Redden's footsteps and won mm -hmm. the overall gold medal. She's the face of the sport across the world right now. Definitely. Yeah, so, and you said you've seen her on a cereal box? Mm -hmm. So, Simone Biles definitely got to be number two and earn her spot on this list. Giselle. Okay. Miss Halburn, and at number one, my hold number on, one. Hold on, hold on. By process of elimination, it has to be Jack and Joni Kersey. Well, look at you, <laughs> and, and, and you're right. I guess I mentioned all those other great Olympians. I left out that very yeah. important name. Mm -hmm. uh, the 80s and the 90s, Catatalon. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. She had to do the javelin, the sprints, and all those events, and go against the best athletes across the world. She beat them twice in 88 and 92. Trained mm -hmm. by her husband, so she made sure she carried his name and everything. And while she was growing up, she played a little basketball and was a multi-sport athlete, very smart. She reminds me of somebody. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. <laughs> so maybe this countdown might change in 20 years. I might have to modify it a little bit mm -hmm. and have a new number one. But um, next week, I'm going to get the guys a turn. And that means I won't have to deal with you and get whooped by you and have somebody who just knew all the stuff I was talking about <laughs> but just made me look silly. Yeah. I'm going to leave. You, you have a... a, a Bye. Nice day. <laughs>